On today's episode, I'm going to teach you guys how to heat treat a small part with a propane torch and a little tin can forge. Welcome back to Fabid Adventures guys. Today we're fixing a part that I broke from my rivnut tool. I was installing rivnut the other day and I ended up breaking this mandrel. It ripped the threads off. So I spun a new one on the lathe. Very similar looking piece. And this is just raw 01 tool steel. I'm going to heat treat it and then temper it back to a spring temper. That way it'll be good and tough and it should hopefully withstand a little more stress than this stupid Chinese part. <laughs> Anyhow, so the thing you need is a propane torch, a little tin can with vegetable oil in it, and this is just a piece of muffler pipe that has uh, ceramic fiber insulation lined inside of it with a hole drilled in it so you can stick your uh, propane torch in it. And then all we got to do is bring her up to temperature uh, heat this up. We want to heat it up slowly so the center gets hot first and the, the outer threads don't get too hot. And then we're going to take a magnet and touch a magnet to it. And as soon as the magnet doesn't stick to this metal anymore, when it goes non-magnetic, that's when you quench it in your oil. So let's fire this little forge up and get the tin can of oil warmed up a little bit so it's not right cold. And we'll get making this part. So you can get this KO wool off of Amazon. Yeah, I think if you search up ceramic fiber insulation, uh, that's what you'll get and that's what you'll find. And it's a simple little thing to fire up. So we just have to spark this up. And we're just gonna put this tin can in front of it to get it warmed up. There we go. We just wanna warm that up to about 135 degrees. So what I'm doing here is I'm restricting the flame coming out and I just want to heat the center section before I put the whole thing in. I don't want to get the threads hot right away, it is what the idea is. And we're going to get the main body, obviously the main body is going to take longer to heat up than the threads will. Okay, so you can see it's turning a straw color now and now it's turning a blue color. There's your spring temper. Now the blue is going away, so now she's getting closer to the red hot stage. And then pretty soon we'll just stick it inside the forge for a little bit and it'll go in and out, in and out, in and out until we get it to non-magnetic. So the back of this scribe is a magnet and you can see it's magnetic right now. We want it to go non-magnetic, and that's when you quench. And this will take a few minutes. You don't want to get it hot right away, like too hot. See how it's orange there already? You don't want to get it white, white hot, but we also want that center body to get close to temperature. So we're going to end up be taking it in and out, and you can see it's magnetic, and the end there is not magnetic. So we're getting close. We keep kind of swapping side to side. We'll try and control our temperature on the part. There we go, just a little more. And then we're gonna quench it in this oil here that's 
about 135 degrees. Non-magnetic. As soon as it's done bubbling, I'll pull it out and we'll see how it turned out. So I know from experience, back when I used to make knives with O1 tool steel, that uh, the, the state that it's in right now, full hard, if you stress that at all, it's gonna break and shatter. So we need to temper it, which is bringing the hardness back down softer and softer than this file, because right now this file actually, it actually cuts the old part. So we wanna harden that a little bit, but not full hard. And I know 375 degrees in a toaster oven will bring that Rockwell hardness back down to about 61. And I think this, we want it to probably be 57, 56 or something like that. I'm not too worried about the Rockwell hardness. I'm just gonna temper it back to a spring temperature, which is that blue temperature that we've seen when we are heating the steel up. And, uh, then she'll be good. So let's pull this part out. It's probably cooled off enough by now. Yeah, she's fairly warm, yeah. So there you can see the new part and it'll be full hard right now. We need to soften it a little bit. So we'll just test it with the file. I can hear it's rock hard. Nice and hard, and that's what we want. File pretty much doesn't even touch it. So we're just gonna sand it up so it's back to uh, shiny metal. That way I can see my temperatures coming. And we want this steel to be shiny that way when I heat it up, I can see the color of the steel and I want that color of that steel to go bright blue and that's like your spring temper. So now you can see I got it all shiny and we're just going to, it might be really hard for me to show the color changing, but we're gonna try it. And I got a quench in here to stop the uh, tempering process. It's the only way I can do it with a torch. We want to try and heat it slowly because that blue color will run real quick there. She's turning shiny. See how it's turning a straw color? Getting close. There's blue quench. Now you can see the blue color. It's, I might have quenched a touch early. It's kind of blue straw, but it looks like it's pretty well blue throughout. So it should be softer, like a spring temper. Just like your car spring in your in your vehicle will be tempered back that way. And we're not full straw color. There's a little bit of straw color looking in there. I might have got it, I could have probably got it just a little bit hotter, but I think this is gonna do hopefully for our purposes. There, I'm not sure if you can see the color or not, but it's a blue is the color you're going for for a spring temper uh, with O1 and probably other steels too, I'm sure, but. I used to make slip joint knives and that's the spring temper I would use for the back spring on the slip joint knife. So we got the new mandrel in and here's a rib nut. So in case you guys don't know how they work, I'll just show you real quick. Rib nut goes, screws on there. And then you just squeeze the handles. You see? and it turns it into like a rivet, basically. So if you guys are enjoying this wide variety of content I'm putting out, go ahead, subscribe, share, like these videos, hit the bell to be notified, give me a thumbs up, 
If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at fabin underscore adventures. We'll catch you guys next Friday.